Welcome to Bytes of Code. In this video, we're going to be going over a while loop. We're going to allow the user to make multiple moves. Uh, right now, what we have is we just have a template for the user to follow. Then once they press that number, they go in that location on the tic-tac-toe board, but the game ends here. We want to let the user to make more moves, and also we're going to put in a function to check to see who wins. Uh, still, we're only going to keep with one player. We're just going to have X, and then we'll slowly integrate the other opponent, the O, into the board. Uh, we've also moved our kind of layout. We're going to move it down here at the bottom rather than on the right-hand side because of our if conditions. We're going to start making if conditions, and they might get a little lengthy. It's going to be just a little bit easier to read. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with our while loop. What we want to do first is have a variable. We're going to do a boolean variable to check if there is a winner. This is going to be our main flag. Is there a winner? And we're going to set this to false because later this is going to kind of kick off our while loop. So while is there a winner is equal to false. And we'll see an error. You know why there's an error? There's an error because of our indentation. So let's scoot this over. Now it's inside the while loop. While is there a winner equal to false, we will continue to ask the user. We will continue to update the board and print the board. Let's go ahead and take a look at our while loop. So you remove X. And we can see the user basically has infinite moves. Well, not really infinite, but pretty much they can win the game. Finally, there's a loop that allows the user to move multiple times. Now let's go ahead and implement a checker. So we're going to check now to see if they got actually a tic-tac-toe, a three across or a three diagonal or up and down. We're checking the rows and columns, and then we'll be able to say that there's a winner. We're gonna we're gonna have a function here that checks for the winner, winner with a lowercase r. Uh, this is gonna take in two parameters. We're gonna take in the board. So this is the dictionary. This is actually us now reading values from the board and seeing who is at what position. But we also need who just went. This is gonna be another parameter in this check for the winner function. And what this parameter is going to do is it's just going to give us the player, the person who has actually just made the move. So we can use this function, check for the winner, for both X and O. We just need to make sure to pass X and O for the second parameter, or X or O for the second parameter. And it will make more sense as we continue on finishing this function. Uh, this function is kind of tedious because we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of if conditions. We're gonna be checking for the rows, and then we're gonna check for the columns. So we're gonna start with checking the top row. And again, this is gonna be a pretty long if condition, really. The board at key number one, which if you're looking at our board, is basically this top left corner right here. If this equals who just went, and board at position two equals who just went. And because we're going for three across, board at position three equals who just went. Then we actually have three across for the same player. We can kind of make an announcement that, hey, there's a winner. So we're going to do our print with the F string. We're going to say the person who just went, so that's our variable who just went, that's the name of the variable, is the winner. And we're going to do something a little bit different that we haven't done before. What we're going to do in this function, right after we print it, still in the if condition, we're going to return. What the return does is it passes back a variable or it passes back an object to whoever called this function. So in this case, we're going to return true. And if we haven't, we've finished this function and we haven't had any if conditions that have been met, we will end up down here and we will return false. Just to emphasize 
what's actually happening with these returns. Let's go ahead and start using this function and print out the value. So right after we print the board at line 633, 63, we're going to do a function check for the winner. We're going to pass it the board. This is our dictionary. And we're also going to pass it the current player. If you remember, our current player is going to be X or O. So this is going to be how we kind of distinguish who is winning or who are we checking for the winner because that is what we are passing to our function. We're going to actually create a new variable. Uh, we'll do winner check. Winner check. Uh, let's get rid of this one. Uh, this winner check variable is going to just be printed out. This is just so we can see if there's a winner. Let's do our F string again. Winner check. Winner status. Let's say winner status. So this, the purpose again of this winner check variable is just to show that the check for winner function will return true or false based on if there's actually a winner. So that's what we actually have programmed. We've programmed this function to return true or false based on a winner. So let's go ahead and run this code. Uh, we actually, in our check for the winner function, we are just checking the top row right now. So let's just pretend that the user is going to the top row only. So one, and we see here, this is line 64 being printed out. Winner status is false. That means that we've went to this function, we've asked for a return, and we've ended up with a return false because this return only comes back if there is a winner at position one, two, and three, the three in a row, then we return true. So if we do another move at number two, and we're not printing the board here, but number two is false and number three. Finally, we have X is the winner and the winner status is true because in this function, the if condition was met. Let's do this one more time. Let's go ahead and print the board. I'm not sure why we aren't printing the board here. So we can actually, it'll be actually visible. So we see the user top left, winner status false. Top middle, winner status is still false. But if we go at the top right, three across, we reach our if condition in our function that checks for the winner and our check for the winner function returns true. So this is how we're going to be able to utilize the return and the function check for the winner. Now the check for the winner function right now, again, only has the top row. This is going to be a little tedious. We're going to do the mid row, which is position four, five, six. We're going to also do the Bottom row. Now we've done all three rows. Let's go ahead and do the columns. Let's do caps. I like caps. Check columns. Uh, we're going to do the left. The left column will be similar to the rows, but it's just going to be a different key. It's going to be one, four, and seven. The middle column is going to be 2, 5, and 8. And the end column is going to be 3, 6, 9. I say end column, let's just put right, right column because we have a left, left, middle, right. So also, we're missing something still. Let's go ahead and run this game. Uh, let's pretend we're doing right down the middle 2, 2, 5, and 7. 2, 5, and not 7. We're going to do 8, right down the middle. X is the winner. But we're missing one, two possibilities of a winner. So I would recommend going ahead and pausing the video and just thinking about we have the rows and we have the columns, but we're missing two possibilities to win the game still. And the answer is diagonally. So we also need to put two more if conditions to check diagonal. 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 
go diag. Sometimes it just it just doesn't look right. Uh, diagonal will check the keys one, five, and nine, and that's from top left to bottom right, and from top right to bottom left would be keys three, five, and seven. So that's just looking at this, we can see that we've checked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are our rows. We've also checked one, four, seven, two, five, and eight, three, six, and nine. These are our columns, and we've checked also one, five, nine, three, five, seven. This is the di the way to win diagonally. So right now we actually have a game with one player. So I don't know exactly how fun that would be, but X would be the winner every time. On our next video, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start to incorporate O. And later on, we'll actually use validation to make sure that the move is actually valid. The O is not going in a place where X has already went, or maybe X is not going in a spot that X already went and not overlapping spaces. If you have any questions or something's just not working for you, just go ahead and write it in the comment section and I will reply. But I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I hope to see you at the next video.